Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to my channel. Welcome to another video. This is what we're starting off today. This is the RX-0 Unicorn Gundam. This one comes with the MS cage. This is Master Grade. Comes in a great big honking box. Looks like this. Great big box. So, today we're going to start with unpackaging all of the trees or runners I guess you could call them and we're gonna take a look through the instructions here a little bit typical Bandai stuff showing all the uh, different animated characters and other actually other anime Gundams or, let me rephrase other Gundams in the anime so Here's a picture of all the runners. I think I counted something like 24 of them. They almost go through the whole alphabet on them. Um, yeah. So, go through. This is how you take the pieces off of the runners. Obviously, we've got a picture of the cage that it comes with and the Gundam itself. Starting with the body unit, then the head, then the arms more arms, assemble the waist, then the legs, more legs, more legs, <laughs> middle of the book where we get some nice artwork, a couple of pictures of the actual model, moving on, still doing the legs, putting them on, doing the backpack, and go to weapons. Of course, what Gundam is, does what? What good is a Gundam without the weapons, right? It's like a tank without its main gun. It's useless. Anyway, and then we go on to the MS cage. I'm not sure what MS stands for, but that's what they call it. It's the MS cage. Assembling, assembling, more assembling. And finally it's done now then I've chosen to actually put this out and I guess what this from what I can tell this is showing me the the gimmick from going from the unicorn mode to the destroy mode um, if you've watched the anime you know it starts off it's the Unicorn Gundam gets its name, obviously, because one, it's white, and two, it's got a single horn. Um, but then it goes into this destroy mode where all these panels that kind of separate a little bit and reveal some red accents all over the thing, and its horn splits into the typical V. And, uh, yeah, so we have the ability to do that with this kit, and they're showing me all the different things um, upon first look at this, looks a little intimidating. Um, now here's how to do it on the legs. Um, so yeah, I'm a little bit intimidated by it since this is now no, number four on my count of Gundams I've built. Um, so this will be fine. And then changing these for the shield and everything in the backpack. And then, of course, where all your decals go. And that's it. And then pictures of it there. So, as you can see, um, this is the unicorn mode and then the destroy mode. Obviously, very different once you pull all the panels apart and it reveal all the red accent underneath. Um, it looks like, according to here, we've got like four characters that come with this kit. Um, from the anime. Where am I here? There, line up. Uh, four characters there, plus the pilot. Um, I can't seem to. Can I? Uh, I'm, I'm done today. <laughs> anyway, so I'm going to set up my little table here just so I have a place to put the box. 
This is how the box comes with everything in it. Lots of stuff. So, I think right now, I'm not going to need this in the box. And that'll give me a tiny little bit more room. Because I have to open all of these up. And then put them back. So, I don't know how much time I'm going to have to actually start the assembly on this because I'm going to have a lot of a lot of bags to open. So it looks like we have the F tree twice. So that's good. Let's put that there for now. actually had this kit sitting there waiting to be assembled for oh a few months now. Oh, there's just some nice metallic blue pieces. That looks like that's part of the backpack. Maybe? I don't know. Um, I did watch the Unicorn Gundam show and uh, it's what, like five episodes or something like that, or maybe six. I'm not sure exactly what kind of timeline it's supposed to take place in. Obviously, Universal Century, blah, blah, blah. It's after the, the One Year War. But I don't know how far they got into it. This, I don't know what this is. Gunpla. Some kind of a, well, it's definitely a sticker. What is this? No, it's not a sticker. I haven't got a clue what this is. It's some kind of a coupon. A gunpla, http colon slash slash gunpla, gunpla dot gp. And then a whole bunch of super tiny Japanese writing in there. So I don't know what that's for. It's not part of the kit. Anyway. There we go. There's our four figures. All nice and super dark gray. Yeah, and part of this is going to be part of the cage, I'm assuming. Let's see. What else? I've got two bags on. This one's got some stickers in it, and it doesn't look like this kit, based on this, I'm guessing this kit does not come with water slide decals. These look like all your typical foil ones, especially for the eyes. And this is all probably for the head, um, but this sheet underneath, it looks like that's those, uh, the rub style decals. That comes with some of those kits. I don't know if you can see it on the camera or not. Back it off, you might be able to see it. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that. And this is R1. Looks like we've got the, the shield tree here. I don't know, I keep calling them trees. I know the, the the Gundam builders I've seen on YouTube, they call them runners. So, this is almost, there we go, R2. So R1 and R2 obviously go together. And then this is D, and that's, and that's, this is definitely part of the shield. Okay. More colors. Bandai really does a real fantastic job at making their kits in such a way that it's 
minimal painting and different colors that go together. So we've got the O tree twice. We have M, just kind of a gunmetalish color, which is nice. I won't have to spray paint this one with gunmetal. We've got another bag with more stickers in it. We've actually got a total of three sticker sheets. So these ones, again, you know these are these are peel and stick. So these are stickers. It looks like a whole bunch of caution caution stickers. Um, let me get that on there. It's a whole bunch of caution stickers with the AE logo on there, um, going together with the G tree. We have, I guess this is the base for the MS cage. Of course, it's probably going to be the last thing we do. times two. Okay. Looks like possibly the arm or at least wrists pieces there. That might be to do with the hip or skirt. We're getting a little pile going here. Sirens in the background. Flexible polycap tree. This looks like more of the base, more base stuff or cage pieces, I guess you could call them. Okay. Which means, I guess this is just more cage stuff. This song is annoying. like any parts that go on a Gundam on this guy. So there we go. More cage stuff. Okay, so that's two-thirds of the box. Look at that. It's part of our super bright red clear piece. Almost like a neon. Neon, but they're also clear. Get a mixed bag here. Looks like possibly weapons. in a barrel. That's cool, this barrel's in one piece. So there'll be no seam line to have to worry about. That's cool. Yeah. And then more clear red stuff. Uh, that's going to be for the shield. Right there. I have no idea <laughs> where the other parts are for, but figure it out as we go along, right? That's the main thing. Let's see this here. Yeah. Okay. Moving along. Oh, we've got the 
Bean saver. Beans. It's almost like a really tiny, faint, very faint blue, eh? The bean saver. So that's cool. Let's get stale. Beans. And that looks like a unit. Unicorn horn pieces, which we'll probably get those golden decals put on later. Okay. Next bag. Nice gunmetal color pieces. Nice that it's got the gun metal and they're not just going with a plain gray. It actually looks very nice metallic colors. It's a nice uh, nice change. Have the metallic colors in there. They're heavy pieces. This thing is gonna be heavy when it's done. And we have the last bag. gunmetal pieces. Um, based on my previous Gundam builds, I'm going to guess these are the feet. And we have a couple of hands. That's actually the first part of the scene. Okay, so we've got the three, three fingers. And oh, there we go. And so that would be three fingers plus one makes four plus the thumbs makes five. And then we got the top of the hand where they all go in. So that you can have three fingers plus a trigger finger, I guess, can do this. And the thumb. And be able to do that. <laughs> Alright. And that's that. And that's all the trees in the box. So let's put them away. <laughs> Now that I've got them out, let's put them back. So I don't know which ones I need first. Now I know some people, they take tape and, and maybe put a tape thing on there so we can easily see this is A and this one is B and all that stuff. I don't bother with that. I just go, hey, it takes me an extra two to five seconds to find a letter designation on the tree, then so be it. It's not the end of the world if I have to actually look at them. But we got lots here, guys. We got lots. I'm guessing I could probably leave the trees out. Or the, not the trees. Leave the... Um, trees that are for the MS base out of the box and actually put them aside for now until I need them later. One thing I didn't notice, or I didn't see, is the pilot figure. Oh well. Finding the pilot right now is not that important. What is important is actually getting in here. Let's take a look. What are we starting with? unit. We need A, D, I, and M. Okay. What have we got out here? P, e, H, and M. <laughs> Don't need these. There's M. We need M. Did I say A? Yes, I did. So we're going to need this guy. That's A. So I need D and I. Oh, I 
found the D. That's good. I have a D. There's the pilots. Right there. Bingo. What the heck was his name? I forget his name in the show. I forget who the pilot is. Menasha. That's it. Menasha. Like Menasha Trois. Not quite like that, but yeah, Menasha. What does I look like? It looks like this. No. <laughs> And J L I. There we go. All right, so we've got our first few. And as you guys know already, I'm loving my little razor glass file. That thing is fantastic. I love it. Okay, so let's start off here. We're going to say, what are we doing here? We've got to pay attention to the A19, which is red. Should I take my glasses off? I think so. I think, do a little better here. This. 19, that's this guy here. Be interesting to see what what if any stress marks are like on this clear red stuff. Yeah, it's it acts just like regular stuff. It turns kind of whitish. Where it's been stressed, just like regular stuff. So we're nice and early into our video. Do you guys want to see and watch me clean up all these parts as we go along? Or would you prefer that I cut it out? Edit my videos more, cut them down on the time, and get more to the meat and potatoes of the, of the builds. I know you, you guys, somebody answered that question in my F-22 build, that you'd like to see the whole process. And of course the process when building these Gundams is a little bit different than building an F-15 or F-22 or, or whatever, right? So I'd like to know, when it comes to building the Gundams, because I noticed my Gundam builds they don't get a huge amount of views, and that tells me a couple of things. Number one is you guys who like to watch airplane builds and tanks, you don't like, you're not interested in Gundams. And or two, um, guys who are, are like Gundam builds have not discovered me yet, or um, I'm just not popular. I'm not a good enough Gundam um, builder, I guess. I don't know, but I'd like to know. Do you want to watch the whole cleanup process? Do you care about that? Um, let me know. Let me know in the comments. Um, I, want to, I want to provide videos that you guys actually want to watch, that you're actually interested in seeing, right? So, um, at the same time, I want to build what I like building, right? So, but, you know, I'm here for you guys too, so it's not just all about me. I2 and I8. I ate. I did. I ate earlier. <laughs> and I'll eat again. There's I2. And I eight. Five, six, ten, three, one, eight. I just realized there is zero black pieces in this kit. Nothing is black. Not a single black uh, runner. 
That's interesting. There's nothing black. And even the polycaps, they're gray, they're not black. Okay, so we're going to take this piece and we're going to snap it down on top of that. And it's going to be able to rotate. Ah, even better. There, so that rotates. Okay. And we're going to take D4, which is our little pilot. And before we take her, take her, take him off the tree, we're going to give him some accent color. Just to help. I don't bother painting these guys. Um, I just don't think it's worth it, especially these. If you guys watch my channel, I don't really build pilots in the, anyway in the first place. So, but in the event that you actually do get to see them, it'd be kind of neat to actually see a little bit of detail in there. I'm just going to wipe them clean a little bit here. I'm not really too concerned about how, how much it is, but just to give them a little bit of shadows in there so you can see. I need to check my text message. Just a second. Okay. Alright, so he can come off of here now. Oops. I don't mean to hit my mouse. Okay. Now he's got to go on his chair. And his chair is M4 and 5. M. Okay, so this looks like it goes like that. They want me to put in, put the pile in first. Okay, so there we go. And then this is going to go like that. He's really in there. He's actually got his own little dashboard and everything. That's pretty cool. That is cool. I like that. I want to give it a visor, another treatment of black on there. So that's together. Now I need A13. Another red piece. Fourteen, eight, sixteen, thirteen. This big guy. Okay.
Did I mention how much I love this Razor file? You're going to hear that a lot. If you're going to watch these Gundam builds, you're going to hear me uh, talk about how awesome this Razor file is. Okay, so we're going to start off with this piece. And it's going to go like this. I'm going to put a little pilot in there. This piece, and it's going to go in here, and then we're going to sandwich it all together. And I wish I could, they got no English in this particular one, except Hyper Bazooka, Beam Magnum, Shield, Waist Unit, Leg, Left Leg. Other than that, there's no English in the actual assembly. So when it gives me a, a little indicator of like this, I've seen where that means build it first, and I've seen that where it says do it later. So it's going to be a really unique little, it's kind of squeaky, like you hear that? That's, um, yeah. This is not tight at all, but I don't know if that's going to be any detrimental thing at all or not. So, I'm trying to, trying to determine whether I put this in correct or not. I think I did. <laughs> I made a, an accidental good move. This has a, a flat edge here, and it's rounded here, and the rounded part is supposed to go to the front. I didn't notice that little detail, but yet I did it right, and I did it, I did it correctly by mistake. Anyway, I-13 and M3. It is freaking warm in my room, and I have a fan blowing right at me, and it is hot in here. It's 26 degrees Celsius in my room right now. And I would love to be sitting here with no shirt on, and you guys would hate to be watching me with no shirt on. <laughs> I-13. sweating. I probably am. And it's because it's 26 degrees in my room right now. And just like last year, I don't want to blast the air conditioning in your guys' ears. So I try to refrain from using the AC as much as I can. But it is going to get to a point in the next month or so where it's going to be unavoidable. Okay, so this piece here is going to be like this, and it's going. Like this goes towards the front, I guess, and then this goes into it. There's a couple of little slots that's going to line up. A couple of little indents, I guess. get it lined up. Okay. And then this guy goes over top. Now I just put it that goes to the front. It's a tight fit. It doesn't look like I have it in the right spot. Um, I didn't. There we go. So we have that little sandwich. Okay, next, down here, we're going to take I-7 and M-6, and M-6, and I-7, 
So what I want to try and do with you guys, I'd like to try and do one page each video. Because there's not a lot, it just is a bit of time consuming because of everything. And I see. I like to actually finish, you know, like say, uh, so we started the body unit. I want to have a body unit finished today. Um, next, next time we'll get the head unit and we'll get that done. If the head unit goes by really quickly, then we'll do the head and maybe an arm. Something like that, right? Okay, so this guy goes upside down, ball down. One of those one way is a couple of slots and it just sits in there. Is that right? There you go. Is that wrong? Now that stuff, I know that. And let's get this lined up properly. Oh, that was satisfying. Alright, so there we go, with that, okay, now that's going to go on top, I guess this is going to be his neck, I want to clean this up a little bit here, just to smoothen it out so that I don't run into any problems turning his neck. Turn his head. Snaps in, he's got some movement. Okay. So there's that. And we've got this bottom piece. That is A16 and M2. We've got a lot of red going on in here. A16, this one. Here's a bit of a sense with this red stuff that uh, I want to clean it up. I want to get rid of these little white marks, but it's also it's on the inside, inner workings, inner skeleton, the endoskeleton of the machine, and you don't get to see it. So, you know, I want to clean it up, but it's not going to be seen anyway, so it's not going to matter if I clean it up. It's not like I'm going to, you know, a month from now, I'm going to take it apart and go, oh, no, I didn't clean up that nub mark. Now that I've dismantled it, you can totally see it. You know, that ain't gonna happen. So, and of course, I don't know. Do you guys paint the Unicorn Gundam? I don't think so. I know they have like different versions of it. One's like a metallic white, almost like a pearl color. It's a silvery white color, I don't know. Okay, so these two go together. How do they go? Like this. Oh. Snap together and hurt myself. <laughs> and then they go on to the bottom of this. Is that it? No snap, no nothing. Oh, it's holding. There's just going to be his gut crunch that he'll be able to do. Of 
course, when everything's all together, it's not going to be that easy to do that, I bet. Next, we have D14. Have we played with the D yet? Ah, there we go. D14. Finally going to add some color. Of course, no stress marks on the white color, so that's fun. That's always good. Never have to worry about that. Just the Just see his feet sticking out the bottom there through the hole. Okay, so we need I-14, oh, we need a 10, 11, 14, 15 off of the I tree. So let's go, where, where are we here? 10. We want 10 and 14 first. We're doing these ones first because these go together and it'll be easier to determine. goes it's facing this direction it goes like this and at first glance it looks like it would pivot but it's got a little pin in there that locks it in place and then this one is going to go on this side into that little slot little bit of leeway but yet it's got like this is oval but then there's a locking peg that locks it in place so that it doesn't move so I don't know I guess we'll see once it's uh, starting to come together more Snap you in the place. 
does have some movement, but it's not as much as it would seem. There is quite a bit of a little bit of a uh, quite a bit of a little movement. <laughs> okay, so that's that. They show them like this. Okay, that's good. And now we've got this little bit, whatever this is all about, I don't know. But we're going back to the A tree. We want A14 and 25. 14 is just this tiny little guy. D, 7, and 8. Okay. Okay, so that's 8. And 7. Okay. So now, what are we doing with these? this up here. A big nub on this one, so I'm just trying to determine whether I'm supposed to clean up completely off or not. So I just did. And clean. So like that. Okay, so we're supposed to take this thing. Or we're supposed to do this twice. So I should have two of these. Ah, I do too. There's the other A14. So there should be another A25. <laughs> there it is. Okay. So now we're in business. Almost. Clean this up. Remember, kids, whenever possible, cut away from yourself. If you do have to cut towards yourself, be extremely careful about it. The sharper the knife you use, the less pressure you need to put in cutting things. So you have to be mindful of that, too. Okay, so we're going to take our bottom piece like this, and then we're going to take this, and it is going to go like this, to there. And not fit properly. And I'm going to be left wondering why it's not fitting. it's super tight and I almost need a pair of pliers, pliers to squeeze it together. And then this little guy goes in up here, just like so, just like that. And you got that little piece there. And then we do it again. Just one more 
to be a little bit easier. And so there we go. We have our two, whatever these are, assembled. And that's it for this page. And so, move on to the next page and see what we've got. Okay, so I'll finish this off and then we're going to call it a day. We'll finish off building our, our, our body part and then we will continue with the head um, next time. The head and maybe one of the arms. We'll see. We've got some pretty good um, twists going on there too. Even if he is a little squeaky. Anyway, so we need again a 20 and 21. Here, but I, gotta, I won't be as assembling it just yet. So I'll put 21 here. Okay. And I need D10 and 11. D, so that's the A, that's the white stuff. go together. I'm sure this one is kind of like this. set up here. I'm not sure how that's supposed to go together. This is a weird piece, guys. I'm not sure how this is supposed to go together. It's supposed to lock in. Is 
far as I can tell, that's how it's supposed to go. It's not really locked in. It's just kind of just barely hanging on there. It's on this side. It's kind of. What you broke it? Yeah, I broke it. I broke the little hinge. And then now I have a little crack right there in the white part. Okay. Well, I'm going to take a ten and figure out how the heck it goes on here. It's confusing on how this goes together. They show this going into that into this slot. Now it falls apart in my hands. But is it just supposed to go up top here like this? Or does it go like this? Side and you're supposed to go like this. Okay, where'd my piece go? It's just supposed to be locked in. And it's supposed to be that. Okay, mm -hmm. alright, I can deal with that. I need A17 and 18. A17 and 18. So, with that on there, I need to have, let's take this one, 
and we take one of these, and it is supposed to go like this. Okay. All right. And then this goes on top. So we take this, and this goes on here. So we got that. All right. Okay. So let's do the same on the other side. This goes on there. And then this goes on top. These boob armor is going to be. I almost feel like I'm going to wind up gluing those things on. So this one's sitting nice and flush against the, the pink, but this one isn't because this is the one that wants to break. Um, let's see. I'm going to put the back pieces on. We need I1 and D15. So, this one goes on here, in theory, it sandwiches it all together. And then this goes on the bottom, oh, it actually goes on like the hinge. There we go. Snaps into place. These things feel really loose, and they are, you can tell they're still moving around there. So I'm not sure how well they're going to hold everything together, but we'll see. Uh, let's see, maybe this will lock them in together. Um, let's go D12 and 13, 16 and 17. Clean them up, clean them up, 
是你那吗？是你是你那。One thing I am tempted because I don't know. I think doing a flat clear coat at the end、um, gives them gives these things a realistic military type look, right? And they're not like you know, if they were real, they wouldn't be super shiny paint jobs on them, right? Yeah, they do that for air shows, but after the thing's been, you know, flying, been in use for a month or so, they ain't quite so shiny and perfect looking. You know, yeah, they bring out. I mean, air Force has a new plane. They want to take it to an air show and demonstrate it, and like wow the crowd. Sure, the thing is. Got its brand new shiny paint job, and it's all flashy and it's shiny looking. You know, I mean, look at the I don't know the Blue Angels、um, and their airplanes. They're super shiny. You don't get any other F-18s. They're dull, worn, all that kind of stuff. Okay, so decide which sides are which.、Um, this is going to be this side. Presses in nice and lines up around that little edge there. That's good. And then we're going to figure out which this is going to go on. This. And hopefully, we're going to line up and hold everything together the way it's supposed to. It's not really wanting to right now. In fact, we pulled that one out of its little slot. To be this side that gives me trouble. There we go. I managed to pull it out and get it back in there. All right, good. Okay.、And、the same on this side. There we go, yay! And so that's kind of how it's going to be with the whole、um, unicorn thing and the weapons. Is it's going the web destroy mode? Is these things kind of? I guess they took in and exposed the red pieces underneath. But now with these plates put on there, everything's kind of getting solid and solidified, and feels much tighter and, and solid now. So that's that's looking pretty good. That's much better. Last little bit we have D9 and I12 and not D9. Basically, the cockpit cover, as far as I can tell. And then this is going to be the last little bit, and that will complete our body unit.
Okay. So we're going to take this first and we're going to put this on here. Does it matter which side it is? Yes, it does. It should snap in place. Wrong, that's why. There we go. See how easily that snapped in? And then this is going to go like this. That's tight. Now we've got to figure out this has to go in here somewhere. I guess on that little bar right there. There we go. And tucks in like that. That's kind of cool. The way to open it up. And there he is. And it clicks in place almost. So there we go. There's our body unit. That is done. Next is the head. So we have our little bit of a gimmick that goes on with these panels opening up. Um, I'll have to see about how you're supposed to do that. That's going to be at the back of the book, though. But there we go. There's our body unit. Get the head and neck piece there. That's looking pretty good. He's got some pretty... Now that everything's together, he's got a little less movement in his, in his waist. Um, again, can't really do his, his stomach crunch that he did before. Um, with everything now tied together, it doesn't want to do that at all. I think this piece will unlock because it's on a hinge right here. There's a hinge, a little bar that that went onto right there. So yeah, there we go. So you unlock it, unlock that piece, and now all of a sudden he's got his movement back in his waist. He can, he can move again, just like that. So, there you go. You can have them locked in or you can just leave it. That's kind of neat. Alright, so, we're going to end it here today, guys. That's going to be it for now. So, I want to thank you guys for watching. Thanks for coming out. If you guys are watching this on YouTube, why not head over to my Twitch and talk to me? Alright? Talk to me on my Twitch. You can watch me live. You can talk to me live. Uh, Follow me on Twitch, guys, www.twitch.tv slash slash duplicitous underscore 29. Why not? Head over to my Instagram, take a look at my pictures that I put up of my past builds. And uh, hit the like button on my YouTube. It's right down which side over? Over here. It's, on, it's down over there, guys. Hit the like button. Um, yeah. And follow me. Why not? Why not? Why not? Anyway. Thanks again, guys, for coming out. Um, thanks for you guys to subscribe and follow me and all that good stuff. You guys are really awesome. And, uh, yeah, we're going to call it a day. And uh, we'll get to doing part two maybe tomorrow. We'll see. Okay, maybe even later today. I don't know. We'll see what my schedule is like. And so, yeah, we're going to leave it at that. And uh, thanks again, guys. We'll see you all in the next one. Phew.